Thank you so much for being with us here today. We have Sebastian Springett, professional snowboarder. Sebastian, at what age did you start snowboarding? Mm, I started snowboarding at, um, I think, 11. Before that, I used to ski a lot. And yeah, since I think I was it 10 or 11 when I started snowboarding. Okay, and what made you choose this specific winter sport? I think if I compare it to skiing, it was way more of a freedom, I think, because I always saw snowboarding more of a lifestyle than a snowboarding or than a sport. So yeah, I, I just saw everyone snowboarding around, having fun, and that kind of made me or inspired me to start, kind of. Okay, cool. Yeah. And do you remember <laughs> what your first time snowboarding was like? Definitely a lot of faults. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think I started and I've, I just enjoyed it straight away. And yeah, just, it was super nice from the beginning on. Okay, cool. Um, well, in your early days, uh, you competed in the Fifth Snowboard European Cup and you scored two fourth places in 2016 in Big Air and uh, Slope Style. Yeah. And what style of snowboarding do you do now? So basically I do more of a video project snowboarding that you can understand it under basically we have our crew during the year and um, yeah we do a video project which is based from December on or November on till March or April and we just go around the cities and try to do stuff there and uh, <laughs> yeah film and yeah it's definitely way different now than I, I used to do at the fist competitions. I think it's way more free. It's like, yeah, it's a free snowboarding kind of thing. So you choose basically what what you want to do and not to like compete against each other. So was this the reason why you chose to do something else than com competing? Exactly, the freedom. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Because I always felt competing was more of a I have to do or I have to do it that way to win or to score a good result. And now it feels like I can choose what inspires me or which personality I kind of want to be. So yeah, kind of okay. yeah, it's a freedom. Okay. Like, okay. <laughs> <It's nice>. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And. How did you become a professional snowboarder? Um, yeah, of course, because of all the competitions, I feel. Um, definitely a lot of people saw me there, even though I was never really scoring like big results or whatever. But I, I think they saw me there and they saw someone else in me then someone who can win the Olympics, for example. And that's what's beautiful about snowboarding, you know, because you can choose or I go this way to like compete, go to the Olympics and stuff, or you choose the way I do it now, which people see you and they want to have you in the videos and you have a, I think a, a, a good style, for example, and you fit with a crew and that's what I think made made me become a professional okay. snowboarder. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and would you say you earn enough money from snowboarding to make a living? Yeah, um, it's definitely not easy, money-wise for sure. But I think also now because it's everything is kind of starting for me, so I hope that I sooner or later I get I I can make a living out of it right now it's it's okay for me like it's more about 
you know, it's a passion. So, um, yeah, money wise, it's, it's definitely good. It's not bad, <laughs> but yeah, you, you for sure don't become a rich person with doing it, but, um, yeah, it's definitely okay. And I, I appreciate the people who give me that, that I can do, do it and hope sooner or later I get more, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's nice. Like I can make a living out of it for sure. I mean, yeah. what? Bring, like what pushes you towards the sport is not the money but more the, the of the course thing. like you should never that's that's the beautiful thing about that sport because you don't do it because of the money for sure like if you start doing it because of the money then you you fail mm. like for sure and especially the way I do it it's more you know you you just have to show your sponsors or the people around you that you really want to do it and then slowly of course they start paying you you get contracts you get good contracts and yeah it's nice like you can travel the world you can see so many beautiful things and do what you love and it's nice yeah. yeah i totally totally get what you yeah. mean and um, since now the x games are coming up how would you describe how important are the X Games for a snowboarder? Well, the X Games are, I think it's the most important thing, like competitive wise in snowboarding, for sure. It's, it's kind of the Olympics of snowboarding or action sports. And yeah, I'm super excited to see what's going down this year. It's always insane <laughs> it's always everyone every year has been something that changes the whole level of snowboarding and that's yeah. that's really cool about the x games i think awesome yeah um well as you said you're gonna watch it do you have a snowboarder that you look up to that you cheer on or in the of course i have a lot of people um it's definitely a lot of people I snowboard with, like even Europe, like a lot of European people, Ben Urban, Cass Lemons, they all, um, they all inspire me actually more of, like, of course, snowboarding wise, but more of a, like personality wise, just because they did a way, they did so much things I hadn't done yet and they show me how to do it, they show me the way, like even as we, as you said before, the money, it's either it comes or it doesn't come, but you should always like look forward and try as hard as possible to, to get to that point where they are now. And um, yeah, it's just a lot of people inspire me actually more than a snowboarder, but just personality wise it's pretty amazing I with snowboard you, you get <clears throat> you get to see so many people and so many different um, personalities which is pretty amazing awesome yeah, yeah. and do you have a, a specialty that you prefer watching or that is your favorite <laughs> um, yeah <laughs> I'm, it's hard. It's hard to pick one for mm. sure. But yeah, I have to say right now it's uh, Cole Navin. Okay. He's uh, I think yeah he's from uh, Boston, USA. Pretty amazing. Vans team rider. Okay. I don't know. Super nice. Inspires me a lot right now. Okay. <laughs> and uh, like from the um, oh how do you say that um yeah discipline in the sense of like specialty of snowboarding like half pipe knuckle hawk and all the events that are held in uh, at uh, x games at x games um definitely i love to watch half pipe actually mm. because i feel in half pipe or that's the thing i do less okay like, where i have the the like I can't compare to it. 
probably. It's so amazing to me. Because slope style, I feel it's it's super amazing as well. It's insane. But I feel like I can see it a lot of times. And half pipe, I, I don't see it that often. Mm -hmm. And only when I watch X Games or US Open or whatever. It's super nice. <laughs> I don't know. It's something different, like for real. Okay. Yeah. And how would you describe the half pipe event to a beginner, for example? Ooh. <laughs> um, it's. I think they have. So it starts with qualification, where they have, I think, three runs each. And it gets to people like, I think the most impressive rider at the end is probably the one who goes the highest, does the most insane tricks, lands it clean. And Stomps it, yeah. no, they say. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I don't know, it's, it's really like for a beginner, it's, I, and that's, that's what also with, with snowboarding. A beginner for a big, like if I wouldn't snowboard right now and then I watch X Games, it would be, to me, it would be not relatable, mm. kind of. It would be like something, I would think, fuck, I can never do this, <laughs> you know? So that's why I think street snowboarding or simple snowboarding, as you can see on Instagram, for example, or whatever, is way more relatable to a beginner. But at the same time, X Games and those big events show the progressive snowboarding, you know, where it it's insane where it came. Like, it's so far ahead from a beginner to that. But at the same time, it's, it's amazing. Like a beginner should watch that and just try to relate. Okay, maybe I, I can't do this, but I should like see an inspiration from and start from zero on and try and try and try. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, last question. Uh, you mentioned before tricks. Now, how would you describe tricks um, for someone that doesn't know what they are? I know, tough <laughs> questions. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of tricks, for sure. I think even a trick is already a turn, for example. Okay. And a trick is a triple cork or a quadruple cork. I don't know, it's just a, a maneuver that you do on a snowboard, strapped in and try to probably land it. It's, it's really hard to explain. <laughs> <laughs> I know, um, tough question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, a trick is like a trick can be simple. A trick can be, I don't know, if you're a beginner, you start with just a straight jump, which is already a trick, kind of, you know. And then you build it up from, from that straight jump. You try to grab your board, which is already a trick. You try to go over a box or a rail, which is already a trick. So. I think a trick is like there's so many tricks that yeah it's it's pretty hard. <laughs> I've not I never thought about that. I know it's it's very <laughs> you know um, yeah hard but yeah, tough it's, question. It's, I mean a trick is yeah a trick is a maneuver that you do on your snowboard, which you probably try to do it as clean or as nice as you possible can do and yeah okay well thank you so much for answering these questions it was really amazing to hear from you and you. Uh, well best of luck for your next projects i guess thank you <laughs> thank you